Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is more than a deluxe hotel. It's a tropical getaway, beachside to bask your worldly cares away, and a cocktail dolip oasis. Did you know you can get a cocktail in a giant pineapple? It's real pineapple, not like a plastic souvenir cup pineapple. Now, this is also the home of an iconic restaurant that serves lots of food, leaving you stuffed to the brim when it's all said and done. But with the obscene amount of food, along with that obscene price tag, is that gonna be worth the reservation? We're gonna find out. Aloha, everybody. It's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and I'm here to welcome you to Ohana, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort restaurant that serves up iconic bread pudding, dreamworthy nudes, and meat. Lots and lots of meat. So Ohana has been a longtime guest favorite and AJ favorite, I'll be honest, for years now, making advanced dining reservations for this place quite the feat to get. But is fighting for a reservation worth the meal here when you're going to wind up having to pay more than just a sand dollar or two to fit this bill? So let's break it down and learn the truth. Okay, welcome to paradise. Ohana is an all you care to enjoy, that's Disney speak for all you can eat, table service restaurant open for both breakfast and dinner. The food is served family style, meaning the entire meal is brought to you and your group rather than everyone at the table having to go back and forth to a buffet or choose from an a la carte menu. Instead, all you gotta do is just ask your server what you'd like more of and they'll bring it right to you. Super convenient. One of the biggest draws for breakfast here was its character dining. Ohana was once the place to chow down alongside Mickey, Pluto, Lilo, and Stitch as they fashioned off their tropical attire and lays. However, the characters haven't made their way back to Ohana just yet. Maybe they're taking a tropical vacation of their own, but Disney's been gradually reintroducing character meals back into the parks and hotels since that initial 2020 closure, so who knows? Maybe we'll see characters return to Ohana sooner rather than later. Now, as far as dinner is concerned, it's always been a character-free meal, but don't think for a second it doesn't have plenty to offer alongside that food. There's lots of entertainment, including a great view of that full-on fireworks spectacular at Magic Kingdom kingdom. More on all of that in a minute. So first question you want to know the answer to, is Ohana really a tropical hideaway? Well, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is part of the Magic Kingdom area hotels, sitting right above Seven Seas Lagoon, chilling on the monorail loop with a great view of the castle. You can find Ohana on the second floor of the main lobby at the resort. It's tucked into the corner next to Tambu Lounge, which is important, so stick that info in your back pocket for later. If you're heading to Ohana from the Magic Kingdom, you'll have plenty of different transportation options to choose from, including the boat, the monorail, and Grand Floridian walking path, if your feet are up for that, of course. The walking path is about a 25-minute trek from the Polynesian, which can be kind of miserable if you've already been walking around the parks all day or if it's super, super hot. But I always take the walking path because more steps is always better, especially when I'm eating a ton of Disney food. And at least you won't have to wait in line for transportation. It's usually pretty empty, too. So if you've just been tired of all the people and all the crowds, this is a good, nice little walk that's usually pretty solitary. Now, if you're at the Transportation and Ticket Center, the hub that brings you to Magic Kingdom. There's also a short walking path directly to the Polynesian right before you go through security. So another option for you to consider. If you're wanting to get to Ohana from a different Disney theme park, like Disney's Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Epcot, or even Disney Springs, you'll have to take a bus to the hotel if you're wanting to use Disney's complimentary transportation, that is. Now, one caveat to that, if you are coming from Epcot, you can of course take a monorail over to the Transportation and Ticket Center and then take the resort monorail all the way around to Polynesian Village, or you can take the monorail from Epcot to the Transportation and Ticket Center and take that short little walking path right over to the Polynesian. So you don't have to be staying at the Polynesian to eat at Ohana, but you will need a reservation for the restaurant. Reservations for Ohana get snatched up like almost immediately after they're released. The odds definitely won't be in your favor for finding last minute availability or a walk up wait list. I won't say it never happens because I'm sure it's happened to someone out there before, but yeah, pretty sure the chances of you getting into Ohana without a reservation are slim to none, or at least you should plan for that. Reservation bookings for restaurants are available 60 days before your visit, but if you're staying at a Disney hotel, you got 60 days plus the length of your stay, up to 10 days to book through. So at that 60 day mark, before your first day on Disney property, you can book your dining reservations for 10 days of your vacation. So that means you get first crack at getting Ohana there later in your vacation. Now, if you're dead set on going to Ohana, like I always am, mark your calendars, set your reminders, force your friends to pester you about the day when your reservation booking window opens up. And remember, booking usually opens about 5.45 a.m. Eastern time. So you want to be up and ready to go at, you know, 5.30 and start kind of pressing those buttons. 
All right, let's talk about the atmosphere of Ohana. Tropical, laid back, and a little outdated. Those are the main adjectives I'd use to describe the whole vibe of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. And those vibes totally carry over into Ohana along with an added layer of warmth, fun, and all around escapism and food. Now, before you tell me, AJ, Polynesian just got a huge renovation a couple years ago. How can you say it's outdated? I don't know. It just still looks a little bit outdated to me. That's just subjective. So, you know, you make the judgment yourself. But here's a fun little nostalgia thing of mine. You know how you always have that one tradition that you have when you go to Disney World, the thing that you do every single time you go? For me, for a long time, that thing was going to Ohana for dinner on the first day. So I would arrive in Disney World and I wouldn't have a park ticket booked for that first first day and I would go to Ohana at 5 p.m. for dinner so I could sit there with that giant pineapple drink and look at the Magic Kingdom and just relax and just say to myself, oh, you're on vacation. It really just felt like vacation to me once I went to Ohana. So maybe that's the same for you. I don't know. Leave your traditions in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. So the dining room has a very open layout, meaning you can watch the chefs around the open grill work their magic as they get your meal all prepped and ready to serve. FYI, there's a kitchen in the back too, but there is kind of a show grill for the meat skewers that you can check out. And the restaurant's also surrounded by windows. They look out onto the lava pool, the Seven Seas Lagoon, and distantly Cinderella Castle, like I said. Inside Ohana, you'll see an expansive thatch style roof, rich artwork, intricate floor tiling, lush foliage, and tiki statues. Of course, true Disney fans know that Ohana means family, and if you don't, then you need to jump on Disney Plus ASAP, because if you've never seen Lilo and Stitch, then and Bria's gonna probably come to your house personally and make you watch it. So while you're at Ohana, cast members definitely treat you like family. They say that they're your cousin. It's kind of like 50s prime time, except not as antagonistic. And what'll happen is you'll kind of have two servers. You'll have someone whose job it is to just bring the food, kind of like a food runner, and someone whose job it is to fill your drinks and sort of take care of anything else that you need. So sometimes service here can be a little bit slow because they really do pack out this restaurant and they try to turn the tables really quickly. And so I think probably servers are tending to a lot more tables than maybe they should be. So sometimes service can be slow. This is one of those places where I always kind of warn them that I go through my I soda pop really quickly and that, you know, I, I, you know, please bring me a pitcher if you can, which of course they can't, but I always like to warn them. <laughs> Cause there have definitely been times at Ohana when I kind of haven't seen my server for quite some time. Now let's talk about specialties. What makes this restaurant completely different? What's the entertainment? Why is this not just your local Denny's, right? Okay, so other than straight up vibes of Hawaii, how does Ohana up the entertainment ante? Well, once upon a time during Ohana's breakfast hours, kids could get together in the Ohana Aloha Parade and join a conga line with Mickey and friends. They'd parade around the restaurant with maracas along to the sung Hawaiian roller coaster ride from Lilo and Stitch. And while the characters aren't back at breakfast, at night you'll still see coconut races. Those are mostly for the kids, basically coconuts and brooms around the restaurant. Super cute, super fun. All the parents want to get pictures. And you might even be serenaded by a ukulele. Tropical vibes to the max, right? And Ohana really does try to mix it up with some fun entertainment from time to time. They usually do a happy birthday song for anybody celebrating their birthday, etc. Is that entertainment? Eh, not really, but at least it's like something that livens up that atmosphere. But one of the most dazzling reasons you book a reservation for Ohana at dinner is because of its perfect position across the lagoon from Magic Kingdom. This can be an excellent spot to watch Disney fireworks without fighting against all those crowds. If you want to watch the fireworks during your meal though, you want to plan ahead. You'll probably want to make your reservation about 30 to 45 minutes before the fireworks begin. That way, you'll be seated and settled and eating when it's time for the show. Now for the best view, you'll need to request a fireworks view seat, which you can do when you check in for your reservation when you get to the Polynesian. Now remember, don't just say a window seat, say a fireworks view seat because there are lots of windows and you can sit by windows and not have a good view of the fireworks. So ask for a fireworks view table. But keep in mind, although a cast member will do their best to fulfill that request, it's not guaranteed and it's not always possible. Remember, this place is popping. So those window side tables could very well already be seated. But still, you should ask because that's your best chance of getting prime fireworks viewing. 
finally, we are getting to the food. There's a reason Ohana is always booked up solid, and it's not just because of that tropical atmosphere. People love Ohana food. And hi, it's me. I'm People. For breakfast, you can expect an all-you-can-eat American breakfast with Polynesian influences, like pineapple coconut breakfast bread, Hawaiian-style ham with pineapple compote, and Stitch waffles. Step aside, Mickey waffles. Stitch is in the house. Okay, just kidding. Mickey waffles are there, too. This conglomeration of food all comes served in skillets, along with fresh fruit, scrambled eggs, fresh island-style potatoes, and biscuit. Now, again, remember, it's family style. It just all comes, and you can keep getting as much more of whatever you want as you want. (laughs) You can wash it all down with a Disney World beverage staple, that's pog juice. This is a combo of passion fruit, orange, and guava juice, and can be found at a handful of restaurants around Disney World. It's sweet, it's refreshing, and a fun alternative to regular old orange juice for sure. Other fun breakfast options include drinks like the Moana, Lilo, and Stitch themed smoothies too, so your kids are definitely gonna want those. Now, if you go to Ohana for dinner, just heed my warning, bring your stretchy pants. Like this is like Thanksgiving, so bring the stretchiest pants you can find. You'll receive the Ohana dinner skillet, which comes stuffed with grilled teriyaki beef, spicy peel and eat shrimp, grilled chicken with Polynesian chimichurri, the beloved Ohana noodles, and broccolini. But that's somehow not all. You can also chow down on salad, Ohana bread with honey butter, honey coriander chicken wings, pork dumplings, and for dessert, the iconic Ohana bread pudding. The bread pudding comes a la mode with caramel sauce, so it's basically heaven on earth. And the bread is that breakfast bread, the pineapple coconut bread that they have, that they turn into bread pudding. So It is just super sweet, super tropical, one of my favorite desserts on property. Servers would come to your table with skewers of meat and dole out however much you want, like Brazilian churrascaria style. This was pretty unique to anything else you'll find in Disney World. However, this offering didn't return when the restaurant reopened last summer, so will we see the return of the meat skewers? We'll see and we'll keep you updated. But if meat isn't your thing, there's a whole plant-based menu available with pineapple barbecue jackfruit, a meatless version of the Polynesian chicken, hummus with chips, and still, Ohana noodles. Okay, let me address these savory nudes. They deserve some recognition. You might be asking yourself, what's so great about some basic stir fry noodles, AJ? In which my answer would be, first of all, how dare you call them basic? And two, the Ohana noodles are savory, slightly sweetened by their teriyaki flavor, and even pickier eaters will more than likely have a couple of these and say, wow, I actually liked that. So just how popular are they? Well, on multiple occasions, Disney has temporarily removed the Ohana noodles from the menu, but public outcry has always brought them back to the menu before noodles fans bombarded the restaurant with torches and pitchforks, and all was right with the world once more. And don't forget, this is an all-you-can-eat restaurant, so feel free to ask for seconds and thirds and so on or whatever you want. By the end of the meal, you'll be filled to bursting, and you'll know exactly why we consider this to be an obscene amount of food. Overall, there's a wide variety of food that comes along with both breakfast and dinner. Each meal has a little bit of something for adventurous and choosy eaters alike. Breakfast is a great option if you're looking for staple breakfast items with a bit of a tropical twist. And there are so many parts of that skillet dinner you're going to be dreaming about long after you take that last bite. Sometimes I take myself to Ohana just by my lonesome, just because I deserve it. So about the price. So let's talk money. Point blank, Ohana is not a budget-friendly restaurant. For breakfast, you're going to pay 25 bucks per adult and $14 per child. Not too bad. But for dinner, it's a steep $55 per adult and $33 per child. However, this isn't too different from other price points at similar Disney restaurant setups. Breakfast prices here are comparable to other restaurants that offer all-you-can-eat options, like Cape May Cafe at Disney's Beach Club Resort. And dinner, though still a bit more expensive than other places to dine, is comparable in price and quality to other places like Guard and Grill in Epcot, and Boma at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. Disney is no stranger to changing menu prices, though, so keep in mind that those can change at any time, for better or for worse, but likely for worse, especially once they bring character dining back. That being said, you can definitely make the most out of your money here. Since these meals are all you can eat, Ohana's not gonna skimp out on you if you wanna eat yourself silly. And I wouldn't blame you if you got like six Ohana nude servings and called it good. But hey, self-care, you do have to live with yourself the next morning and you might have to get up early for rope drop. Okay, before we get into the real juicy stuff here, remember you can find super in-depth restaurant reviews for all the Disney World restaurants thanks to the 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. That ebook is packed with over 800 pages of our team's firsthand expert experience on everything food in Disney World. But if it's not what you were expecting, don't sweat it. The guide comes with a full money-back guarantee. You can order a copy today at dfbstore.com and you can use the code YouTube for a discount on your purchase today. Okay, big question about Ohana. Is it worth it? Well, though Ohana has some epic theming, fun entertainment, and loads of food, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be worth the obscene cost for your group. So let's look and see who should dine here and who should luau on over to another restaurant. You should dine here if you want a meal that's worth the hefty price and you 
like Polynesian food. The cost of eating here isn't cheap, but Ohana provides quality, unique eats and a lot of them. But remember, you have to like this kind of food. So if you like grilled meats and teriyaki noodles and pot stickers and sweet, savory chicken wings, then this is going to be a decent spot for you. If you've got it in your budget to splurge on at least one meal on Disney World property, Ohana is a solid contender for that great food and atmosphere combo. Now, if this is your first time in Disney World, try making the reservation. If you're celebrating something, try making the reservation. If you just want a tasty meal with lots of variety and a satisfying setting, then try making the reservation. Okay, maybe you want a big breakfast without the characters. For some, a breakfast without character dining is like a Christmas tree without the ornaments. Where's the fun? Where's the pizzazz? And for others, a breakfast without characters means a more affordable, quieter, chill experience. Character dining is definitely going to bump up the price of a meal. Like Topolino's Terrace character breakfast at Disney's Riviera Resort, that's 42 bucks per adult. Even the kid menu price is steeper than the adult breakfast price at Ohana right now. And this might not always be the case if when character dining returns to Ohana. So if you want to have an Ohana breakfast at its most affordable price point, now is your chance. Another reason you might want to go to Ohana, you want to dine with a view. If you can work it out where your reservation is timed a little before the Magic Kingdom fireworks and you get a table next to those windows with a fireworks view, then you'll be in for a real dinner and show spectacular. That really puts the worthiness of this restaurant over the top. The Disney fireworks music is pumped in through the restaurant during the fireworks and the dining room lighting is dimmed to really set the mood of the performance. Okay, so who shouldn't eat here? Well, you shouldn't dine here if you're sticking to a really, really refined budget. It's completely justified to think that spending all that money per person just for a meal isn't going to be worth it in the end, no matter how good the food quality is. If a family of four with two adults and two kids were to dine at Ohana, they're looking at paying over $80 for breakfast and over $180 for dinner. You might see more value in stretching your dollar by getting a $5 pastry for breakfast somewhere and feeding the whole family for what it would cost you to feed one child at Ohana. And if you're planning on traveling with a bigger group, you're looking at maybe hundreds of dollars just to eat here for dinner, which could add up to a night stay at one of the moderate resorts. You also shouldn't eat here if you're not wanting a big meal. The portions at Ohana give you the chance to get the most bang for your buck, but if you don't want to start or end your day with tons of food, then it's probably not worth the splurge for you. Also, if you prefer to stick to just one type of food per meal, then you might not like the variety offered here. Seriously, dinner includes like 10 different foods. And if you're only going to eat noodles, which I totally understand, then it's not worth paying for everything else. Speaking of, if you just want Ohana noodles, if you're interested in trying some of the food from Ohana minus the major price tag, here's a big, big secret for you. Try Tambu Lounge right next to Ohana's entrance. Tambu Lounge serves food after 4 p.m. and has previously served up a selection of the same options you find on the Ohana menu, like those glorious Ohana noodles. Told you remembering Tambu Lounge would come in handy later, right? So here's the catch. These items might not be listed on the regular menu. So check with a cast member at Tambu to see if you can get your hands on any Ohana Eats. Plus, they'll be much cheaper than the all-you-can-eat option inside the restaurant. By the way, they also sometimes serve that amazing bread pudding. And another reason you might not want to dine at Ohana right now, you're waiting for character dining to return. Characters are one of the most fun parts of breakfast at Ohana, but since they haven't come back yet, that may be a deal breaker for you. Character dining for breakfast can still be found at other Disney World restaurants like Topolino's Terrace, Chef Mickey's, Hollywood and Vine, so make sure to check the Disney World website to see what character dining will be available during your visit. All in all, Ohana might have an obscene amount of food with some obscene prices, but the quality is high, the service is exceptional, and the Ohana nudes need to come over to my house ASAP so I can eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So there we go. There's our Ohana review. Sometimes the service is slow. Sometimes the meat's overcooked. But overall, you're going to find really high quality and good value here, I think. Okay, want to stay up to date on all the latest news coming out of Disney World? Of course you do. So make sure you sign up for our DFB newsletter, where we'll send you updates on all the most recent announcements, the openings, the changes, the ride opening dates, and everything else in the most magical place on earth straight to your email. And the best part, the newsletter's totally free. I'll add the link in the description below. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts on Ohana in the comments, please. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.